put her here in Arkadelphia, Arkansas, and USA. And folks, you know, I'm very excited. You know, after listening to Jamie and and Mr. Dan Cattle, who couldn't be excited? You know, they the presentations they do and the information they share makes everybody excited. And one of the things that I want to mention is usually my trainings are something that I need to hear, so I benefit a great deal due to the reading and research that I do to prepare the training. So I want to thank you for giving me the opportunity to learn and to grow and to move up another step in my business as well. The training tonight is going to be on the 12 Universal Laws of Success, and I also want to compliment all of you who are on the call tonight or watching on the uh, STEAM Team site later on. Each one of you has set yourself apart when you attend the events of our business. And this training is going to touch on some of the things that we have touched on before, but repetition is good. You know, as Dan Caddo says, repetition is a mother of skills. The more times we hear the same message presented in a different way, the more we retain it. So we're going to be talking about these 12 universal laws of success, and that is the law of thought and manifestation, law of change, law of vision, law of command, law of human magnetism, law of focus, law of action, law of value, law of relationships, law of supply, law of persistence, and law of truth. And starting with the law of thought and manifestation, you know, uh, we all heard that thoughts become things or results depending on the feelings that we give the thought. Our thoughts manifest in our life experiences depending on the emotions and feelings that we associate with these thoughts. Now, I know most of you are familiar with Proverbs 23.7. <clears throat> Excuse me. For as they think of in their heart, so are they. Our heart is the center of our true feelings and emotions. Our heart is a focus on the things that are important to us our value systems, and how we feel about ourselves. And how we feel about ourselves is our self-image. Thoughts become things or results according to the feelings or emotion we experience when thinking those thoughts. They can be positive or negative, and that's the results we're going to get. Our thoughts are manifested into our life experiences, so be very aware of what and how you're thinking. Here's a thought that really brought me up short as I was doing some research that I'm experiencing today is a re what I'm experiencing today is a result of yesterday's thoughts. So if I want to change the results that I'm getting today, I have to be cognizant of what my thoughts were yesterday and also be aware of what my thoughts are today to get the results that I am wanting. And if I'm not getting the results that I'm wanting, then I need to evaluate my thoughts and change them so I do get what I want. You know, what we think about is affected by our self-image. How we see ourselves in our own eyes determines what we get in life. Self-image is our own concept of who we are. It is an emotional and mental picture we hold in our conscious and subconscious mind of who I am, what I am, and what do I represent. Your self-image is the starting point of your life experiences. All of our life experiences have been and are presently being filtered through your self-image. If your self-image is small, limited, based on ignorance, fear, doubt, and insecurity, your experiences are going to be very different from a self-image that is based on knowledge, love, courage, respect, faith, and confidence. Our self-image is like a magnet attracting or repelling like or unlike qualities into our life experiences. And to attract these things in your self-image will need to be compatible with attracting good positive thoughts, people, and experiences. You know, have you at, I'm sure you have, because I've, this has happened to me many times, when you were uh, talking to a prospect who had no money, no energy, or desire to do anything to change their position in life. They had the feeling that by just the virtue of them signing up as a distributor that they were going to be successful without doing anything. You know, I have encountered these people, and when I got off the phone with them, I had to sit there and evaluate what my thought process had been that I attracted this type of person, and I needed to then make changes. So it's time to address some of the things that affect our self-image, and that is thoughts, emotions, feelings that were developed in our childhood. And this is a subject that I have covered several times in my trainings in the past, that the first seven years of a child's life is when they develop their basic systems of values that will be with them throughout their life. This is the time of their life that they learn and develop all of their emotions, feelings, and belief system. They're like sponges. 
they absorb all the good and the bad. And whatever they're exposed to goes directly to their conscious and subconscious mind, making a permanent impact on their emotional and feeling nature. This ends up being the foundation of all our decisions and actions as adults that are based on our emotions and feelings and beliefs that we formed and planted as a child. You know, if you find that these beliefs and feelings aren't serving you, then you need to identify them and change them to your adult to upgrade them and update them so that then they will benefit you. And I've done that several times in several of the things that, that I've identified that were limiting me. Then environment. Environment is a strong influence because it's the source of validation and confirmation. Associations. We know the law of association is that who we associate is who we become. So ask yourself, who are you becoming like? If not who you want, maybe you need to make some changes. Maybe you need to uh, change who you're associating with, who your, some of your friends are. Spend less time with them and more time with winners. And some signals of poor self-image, blaming others, running away from your problems, not facing them and solving them, constantly criticizing others, expecting someone else to solve your problems and challenges, and pretending everything is OK. No, it's all OK. And how you can improve your self-image. Realize that you have the unique ability to change your self-image by changing your thinking about yourself. By constantly and consistently filling your mind with thoughts and feelings of self-image that you desire. With that, that you can improve your self-image. And here's some things that you can start thinking about. Be honest with yourself. Do an evaluation of yourself. Develop your imagination. Relax. Have a winning feeling. Cultivate good habits. Aim to be happy every day. Be you, and I mean the real you. Be com have compassion. Learn and grow from your mistakes. Know your weaknesses and turn them into strengths. And never, never stop growing. So the law of change. There's four fundamental aspects of uh, change. And the law of change provides that the life you're experiencing depends again on your thinking, and it can be changed. Awareness, faith, choice, and desire. Awareness. Before one can make changes, one has to be aware that changes are needed. In other words, you have taken a look at yourself and realized that there are some areas that need changing. Second one, faith is a firm belief or trust in something or someone without object proof, believing without seeing. Applying this to making changes in your life, you must have faith that such changes are possible. Choice. For you to change your life for the better, you must identify and define what a better life means to you. Then you have to choose to pursue and do what it takes to attain that better life. Then desire. Desire, which is a chief ingredient to change. Unless you have a burning desire, a deep hunger, for the changes you want to bring about in your life, these changes will not happen. And here's some obstacles to change. And the big one is fear. Fear of change is sometimes really the fear of the unknown, of getting in, out of your comfort zone. Fear of criticism. If you have this fear, it will neutralize your de desire for change, and you will remain stuck. You won't progress. Fear of failure will keep you from trying to change. Often it is manifested as procrastination, and you make excuses. Law of vision. When you, were you aware that if you have no vision of where you want to go with your life, your business, you will be miserable and will fail to achieve a better life. Your vision must be crystal clear and in great detail using all of your senses. There are two aspects to this law, and they are number one, being pacific, and number two, using your imagination. And being pacific involves your goals. Goals are short-term and long-term. They should be written, committed to, shared, should be realistic and attainable, flexible, and reflect change measurable. And I'm not going to spend a great deal of time on the goals, because there are several great trainings and information on goals on the steamteam.ca site. I believe Joe and Dan both have, have done trainings on, uh, on goals. And then your purpose. Your purpose is what you want your life to represent, and is usually revealed to you through your long-term goals. It is your reason for living, and, not only, and can only be determined by you. Somebody else can't determine your purpose for you. 
Imagination is your power to form mental images of something not present to your senses. Your power of imagination is used to see beyond the appearances of your present situation to the possibilities of who you really are and what you can become, your potential. Law of command. Now this involves affirmations. When you consistently use an affirmation, believe that you deserve it and that you believe you are capable of attaining your desired outcome and it will happen. But if you affirm a negative outcome with feeling, you'll get that too. Example, if you use words like, I can't do this, I know this won't work, this always happens to me. They can be statements you're making and think they're harmless statements and idle words, but they are negative. And a reminder to be aware of what you're saying to others and to yourself that are negative and they can influence the results that you're getting. You can pro program your life with positive affirmations, using them on a daily basis with feeling and belief. Say them first thing in the morning, many times during the day, and at bedtime, looking yourself in the eye in the mirror with feeling. To make them even more powerful is to preface them with, I am. Example, I am healthy, I am wealthy, I am unlimited, I am worthy, and so on. You know, if you are consistent with your affirmations, you will see changes and results. Positive affirmations, positive results. Negative affirmations, negative results. Law of human magnetism or law of attraction. This law states that you attract what you are and you are what you think about most of the time. This law operates through a process of radiation, uh, vibration, and attraction. It's your energy. Each of us is like a magnet radiating a form of energy, a vibration that attracts or repels, like or unlike, thoughts, feelings, and associations. Human magnetism operates primarily through your attitude and your enthusiasm. Your attitude projects who you are, what you're about, and where you're going. It may be positive or negative projection. When it is positive, you project knowledge, understanding, courage, and faith. When it is negative, you project ignorance, fear, and doubt, with the primary manifestation being that number one thing again is fear. Fear is accompanied with indecision, doubt, and worry. And these fears can be fear of poverty, criticism, ill health, loss of love, old age, and death. And fear will hold you hostage and neutralize your very thoughts and visions. And as long as fears control your feeling nature, your attitude cannot be positive. I'm going to touch on another one, and that is worry. Worry is a negative state of mind that causes anxiety, distress, and uneasiness. It works slowly and persistently, destroying your initiative, self-confidence, and reasoning faculty. Worry affects the circulation, the heart, the glands, and the whole nervous system. When your mind is filled with fear and worry, a negative vibration is transmitted, and this vibration passes through your attitude to the minds of all of those in your presence, in other words, your prospects and your uh, people that you're wanting to uh, share the business with. So to eliminate worry, decide that there is nothing in life worth the price of worry. Just think about the things that I just mentioned about how it affects you physically and affects you mentally. So no amount of worry will change or help the outcome. A large percent of the things you worry about never happen. I learned a long time ago and heard this quote that of 100 things that you worry about, eight of them happen, four of them for the good, and the other four you couldn't do anything about anyway. You had no control over them. So get rid of worry. To overcome these fears, you must adjust your attitude and realize that all fears are simply states of your mind and you're in control of your mind, and you can overcome these fears by changing your thinking. Enthusiasm. Enthusiasm is one of your most important assets. It is in the sound of your voice, your tone, your motion, and movements, and the look in your eye. It is shown by your walk, your gait, the way you shake hands, the way you hold your head and mouth. It increases your energy level, which can be felt by others, helps you get the cooperation of other people, attracting them to your way of thinking and acting. This is a powerful tool, and I you know, recommend people use your enthusiasm more than we, than we do, that it is a tool that can change things for you. Law of focus. Now, the power of focus, to be focused means to exert such self-control that no one and nothing can deter or detract you from your goals and your vision. 
it, your, your laser beam focus. You know, I think about uh, sometimes when <clears throat> you can be reading an article or engrossed in a TV program or, uh, you know, totally engrossed in it and you're totally oblivious to your surroundings. You know, people can walk in the room, people can talk to you, and you're so focused on that, whatever you're focused on, you don't hear them. And that's the kind of focus that I'm, that I'm speaking about that we need to have in our business. And what you recognize or focus on, you energize. What you energize, you realize, and that's your results. And to be focused, you will require faith in yourself and your abilities. There are some ways to overcome lack of focus. Focus on one thing at a time. Stop trying to multitask. Have clearly defined goals and purposes. Believe in yourself and your abilities. Eliminate distractions. Anything, any thought, any person, and any emotion that is not supportive of and congruent with your goals, vision, and purpose can be considered a distraction. You know, when I'm, again, when I read this and was preparing this, I thought again of some of the times when I'm reading. You know, I may be reading a self-improvement, you know, Tony Robbins or somebody's presentation, and I'm sitting there, I've read this whole page, but I don't know what I've read. You know, I've read words, but I have nothing, absolutely nothing in my mind of what I read. And then I sit there and I realize that my mind has been over here thinking about, well, I need to send that person an email. I need to make that phone call. I need to do this. That I'm not focused and I'm distracted by my mind thinking other things. So I find one of the things that works for me is to make a list of those things. And then I can turn loose of them and get back and be focused again and eliminate those uh, distractions. Self-discipline from within, having control of your thoughts, and that has to do with what we just spoke about. And control anger. When somebody makes you angry, they take control of your mind and you. And so it helps to recognize your anger and, and diffuse it and, and release it and let it go. Law of action. The law of action controls the manner or method of performing the activities in our life. It is a methodology by which the principles of success are actually implemented on a day-to-day, moment-to-moment basis. It involves your behavior, contact, conduct, habits, and method of operation. It's a process by which your thoughts and feelings become the things and experiences of your life. This is where all of the different laws and the things that we have spoken about tonight come together, resulting in you taking action. And you exchange the word obstacles and problems from your vocabulary and your thinking replacing them with situations and challenges. Law of value. This law covers the interactions between people of different levels of consciousness or awareness. It states that you should not exchange the things that are important with people who are beneath your level of consciousness or awareness. Ask yourself, what is the best use of my time, thoughts, energy, and resources right now in light of my goals and visions and purpose? When I'm at this stage, I usually think of this person and I suggest where they can go obtain the information that they need to increase their conscious and awareness level. And many times it's trainings on the STEAM team site. And it's also a good time to just maybe take a few minutes and educate them and do a little training and guide them to where they can increase their awareness and uh, their vision. So law of relationships. Every step of our success involves relationships. Our business is built on relationships, and your success will be determined on how well you are able to develop positive, gratifying, and empowering relationships. And here are some ways that you, you can improve your relationships with others. Be likable. You first must like yourself. So find out who you are and, and find out that you're pretty an OK person and like yourself. And folks, there's another thing I like to add here, and that is to smile. You know, when you go out in the public, you meet a lot of people and encounter a lot of people. You don't know them. I don't know them. But I like to make eye contact with them and to smile at them and say, hello, good morning, good afternoon, whatever. And it's amazing how it affects them and how it affects you. You know, it's a very gratifying thing to see that these people just really brighten up and they smile and say hello, too. It's a, uh, to me, it's one of the fun things to do when you go out shopping. Then remember people's names. It makes them feel that you think that they're special, and they are. Thank people for what they do. This gives them value and validates them. Let them know you appreciate what they have done for you. Praise them. It expresses your approval for what they do. And listen to them with your full attention. 
you know, we're all so so involved and so busy, and today, and everything is so instant. So you, when you are talking with someone, put your telephone aside, put your cell phone aside. If you have papers or anything, put them aside and give that person your full attention. Make eye contact and totally listen to them, and you'll be amazed at how it gratifies them and edifies them. I encourage them to talk about their accomplishments, goals, and dreams. Recognize and acknowledge the importance of everyone you meet, and do not criticize. Tenth, law of supply. This law provides that everything you need in life is always available. There is an endless supply of whatever you need wherever you go to get whatever you want. You know, sometimes people think, well, somebody got there before me and got everything. Well, that's not true. There is no shortage of supplies. Law 11, law of persistence. Persistence is the one trait that virtually all successful people have in common. It is a measure of your faith in your own abilities and skills. The more persistent you are, you will have an increase in your belief in yourself and your abilities. When you're persistent in your efforts, the law of averages works in your favor. Persistence is an expression of your will to win, to overcome, to survive, to complete whatever you set out to do. When you say, I will, this expresses your desire and determination to act. So why do some people give up and or quit? It's because they do not have that will to win. They lack faith. They become discouraged and quit at the appearance of adversity or problems. Anything that causes a bump in their road to succeed, they quit. The fear of criticism, sorry, the fear of criticism will take away a person's drive, their creativity and their self-confidence. And the fear of failure is lack of faith in yourself, and your abilities. The habit of procrastination is the number one cause of failure. It is a theft of time and is built by continuous inaction. It's a learned habit which can be overcome. So don't let it rob you of your success. Law of truth. The truth will set you free in your basic understanding of the universe, the laws and principles by which it operates, and how you can fit in this universe. Take advantage of these laws and, and use these laws to your advantage because they are working whether you're aware of them or not or using them or not. So use them to your advantage. So here is a summary of the 12 universal laws that we have just touched on. The law of thought and manifestation. You become what you think about most of the time. I like this statement. What you recognize, you energize. What you energize, you realize. Law of change. You change your life by changing your thoughts. Law of vision. What you envision in your thoughts is what you get in your life experiences. Law of command. What you say is what you get. Law of human magnetism. Like attracts like. Be the person you want to be to attract the people you want to meet. The experiences you wish to have and the possessions you seek to enjoy. Law of focus. Keep your eye on the prize. All distractions are equal and equally counterproductive. Law of action. Be effective when doing what must be done. Law of value. Invest your time, thoughts, energies, and money wisely and effectively. Remember, there is no such thing as a free lunch. Law of relationships. Practice the golden rule. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Law of supply. There is always enough of what you need. Law of persistence, a winner never quits and a quitter never wins. Law of truth, the truth shall set you free. Now you may have recognized a, a common thread throughout the presentation and that your success is between years, as Joe continually tells us many times in his trainings. It is in your mind and what you think. Master that and you will be very successful in anything you do. So thank you, everyone, for your attention this evening. And this is Francis Maxwell in Arkadelphia, Arkansas, signing off. Good night.